Of which I have six. Count them, six children. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very much. Totally let my wife have sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> People say, why do you have six children? I say, could you resist? <laughs> no one can resist that voice. So, uh, this is an acting panel today. We're going to get up and do some exercises and whatnot. But before we do, I thought I'd open it up for some questions since I haven't really gotten to talk to you guys yet. Or you. I like pointing out random people to see if they flip out. Don't you agree? So, I'll open it up to you guys. Any questions you want to ask about anime, acting, voice acting, characters have done, any of the whole gamut. And I promise I won't let you eat the whole time up with questions. We will get out and do something. That's more like ninja karate. <laughs> yes, we'll start here. Um, what was your favorite role? My favorite role right now is Dr. Stein because... Uh, and I like him because he's the classic sort of good bad guy, which I tend to get uh, a lot. A lot of the characters I do are good bad guys. Which is strange. Oh, Different yeah. flavors of good bad. Uh, although, right there with Dr. Stein would have to be he from Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, yeah. I love Hie. Um, I also liked Android 17 a lot. He was like an acting vacation. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, almost every character I've done, I really love. At least at the time I was doing it. But then you get released from them, and you're like, oh, okay, now I'm okay with that. Although, yeah, okay, I constantly miss. And I just made these. Um, I made these CDs. It's called dub tracks, and uh, I just did this dub track of episode 5 of Soul Leader and episode 8 of Yu Yu Hakusho, and I hadn't watched. And what it is, is it's basically like a DVD commentary mixed with MST3K, and it's <laughs> me adding extra Hiei and uh, Dr. Stein lines in. <laughs> and I also threw in like some voicemail messages and ringtones and stuff like that. Uh, so if you guys want to buy one later, just come up and beat me, although I only have two right now. <laughs> Literally, I only have two right now. I can burn all of these eventually, but right now I've only got two. And that may be the only two I have. So they could be a rare commodity. What's up? Why is the Grinch now Captain? What is no from, from the Nightmare Before Christmas, the very first movie date I ever went on with my wife. Aww. That movie holds a special place in my heart. Stitched up as it is. No, no, I mean literally stitched up. I had a heart attack two years ago and then this slice me. Oh, 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 no. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? I'm going to rip my shirt up. Yeah, they did. I had this massive heart attack that could fly me in a helicopter in D.C. to this place to save my life. It was kind of awesome. <laughs> it was. The best time of my life. I was like, wow. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you have to kind of come back and be like, drugs! <laughs> Which is the only time you'll be allowed to do that as a family man. So I don't recommend it as a, you know, the process you should go through in getting yourself out. Come in, we won't stare at you. Come in all you want, I don't care. I'm used to it. I was going to say something else, but I've forgotten what it is now. So let's take another question. Yeah. Um, I've heard this from a lot of other voice actors, but how is it different from like, voice acting and acting on stage? How is it different for you? Right now, I'm preparing to play Trukio, Taming of the Shrew, at Trinity Shakes in the DFW area. And you get the script beforehand, there's a volume of work behind it, you need to memorize the lines, you get to work and react off other actors. And all of that stuff is wonderful. In, in the booth, it's typically just you, and you never know what order you're going to record things in. Sometimes you record first, and so when you're listening, all you hear is nothing, and then you're reacting to nothing. It's like, oh, I don't have a partner there. Uh, but that has its benefits as well, because you just get to 
sort of focus in and do by yourself. And like film work, voiceover work, you get to like, oh, I screwed that up. Oh, that was wrong. Oh, now I got it right. On stage, there you go. <laughs> keep going. No matter what happens, you got to keep going. So I enjoy stage for different reasons than I enjoy the voice work. The voice work has all of this that comes with it, mm -hmm. which you guys are the audience, and there's almost no other media I work in where you get this much interaction with your audience. You get to share the experience with them. On stage you do, but it's only during the performance that you're sharing with the audience. This is like, I don't know, it's weird because I go to anime conventions all over the world and we're all the same everywhere. It doesn't matter where we are. It's, we're all the same type of people. So that, that makes us sort of a family, which is interesting. What type of person is that, that you're all the same type of person? We are all the same type of person. We are all crazy. Yes. <laughs> I would say, if you totally fit in in this world, <laughs> Excuse my French. Dick is the French word for penis. <laughs> no, they can't. Don't anyone go to their French class. Oh, we to do the dick. <laughs> Very bad idea. Most of what I say you have to completely ignore, except when I start talking about acting. Then I'm usually being serious. Okay. Uh, more questions? Yes. I got into voice acting. I was doing a, uh, and I'm going to stretch out. I hurt my back. That's what happens when you become an old man. You hurt things. Uh, no, actually, several years ago, I ruptured a disc doing a stunt, and every once in a while, it comes back to haunt me. What was the question again? <laughs> the squirrel. <laughs> You sort of step like this? No, I was doing a uh, improv, I was in this improv group, and my friend uh, Brad Jackson was in the group, and he was like, hey, they're doing uh, auditions for this Japanese anime over in North Richland Hills, you should go. And I was like, that totally sounds like a scam. <laughs> like, how much did you have to pay to audition? He's like, you didn't have to pay to audition. I'm like, okay, I'll go try it out. Oh, Yoda's sitting on your lap. <laughs> so I went to this uh, audition and this sort of a really gruff voice, bald guy named Chris Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, who was a badass, uh, came out to greet me, and then I auditioned, and then I got the role of Garlic Junior in Dragon Ball Z. Mm, I'm gonna push you into the dead zone. <laughs> <laughs> Which my inspiration for Garlic Junior was Edith Bunker from All in the Family. <laughs> So that was kind of like where I found the voice for that. And so Brad sent me over there and I auditioned and I got the role and that was like 14 years, 15, 17 years, 16 years. <laughs> oh my gosh, someone get me a coffin. Just let me lay down for a bit. <laughs> I'm getting old now. I'm very young. I'm only at 11 billion. <laughs> More questions? Yes, sir. I was wondering what stage Arbor Day is in, and if you could explain it to everybody. Wow. I've the Kickstarter thing. Yeah, Oscar, it is like so close. It's so funny that you bring that up because I was just in an email conversation with Chris Sabat and Rena Palencia, who are helping me finish it. We were going back and forth, kind of yelling at each other a little bit <laughs> about getting it done and getting it done right. In the exact stages it is in, as Brina is doing her last cleanup on the edit. Then I'm going to look at it once and put some notes on it. She will finish that portion of the edit, and it will go over to Chris Sabat at Okotron 5000. They will do all the score and sound design, and then it will finally be ready to pass off to all the wonderful Kickstarter supporters who helped us get it finished. I, could, I had versions I could have sent out to supporters earlier, but they were not as good as they could have been, and I really wanted to give them the real deal, the right the right awesomeness. Uh, Arbor Day is a movie that I made with the help of so many really talented and wonderful people. And it's the first musical comedy about September 11. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funnier than 9-11, that's what I say. <laughs> uh, 
It's actually quite a sweet film. It's a love story. It does push buttons. I like to push buttons. I don't think the reality, the reality that we think we live in is different from the reality that is actually happening around us. Although not as much with this crowd, because you guys are used to letting reality shift. Sure. So if, if the moon were to suddenly turn purple and fall from the sky and land in the ocean and be a monster, like everybody would be like, ah! And all the anime people would be like, awesome! <laughs> Everything's coming! You'd be like, it's time to go! Let's zap it! Somebody come down! <laughs> Which might happen, you know. I believe we're all connected in ways that we don't understand. As a matter of fact, I went to do a documentary on something called The Electric Universe. Which I highly recommend you look at because it's going to change all of space, time, and science, physics, archaeology, and flip it on its head in a way that's going to be like Dude. the world is round or the world is flat. No, it's round. It's about that much of an amazing shift. I did this documentary with these people, and I forgot where I was going with this. Something about science. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying right before I said electric universe? Hey, we're all connected. Oh, we're all connected. That's what I wanted to say. One of these guys at this conference, uh, and these were all like scientific people. The first person I bumped into was the gentleman, the rocket scientist who built the rockets for Japan. That uh, when Japan couldn't get any satellites in space, they brought him over and he's like, <laughs> and taught them how to build rockets. The other guy I met was the immediate, immediate past vice president of Lockheed Martin, which is you know big aerospace company. But there was one dude there, and this is like serious scientific conference, people with their papers and their pointers and their charts and their microscopic slides and whatnot. But one of the dudes there had, was measuring the magnetic field of the human heart, which I was interested in. Since mine was stopped for six hours after my chest was sawed in half. <laughs> ah, alien! <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, it's like when you get an EEG, these things are connected to your chest. And it's